Now I want to talk about the engineering models that are used to model these. We don't need to know a lot about these as technicians, but I want to show them because it tells you where some of the parameters we'll talk about later come from. So the first engineering model I want to talk about is called a z-parameter model. So we start with our base circuit, which is going to have a resistor in series with a voltage source. So this is the base of the transistor here. And here is the emitter. And uh, well, we'll just look at this and unconfuse that in a second. Here is another similar circuit, which represents the collector circuit. Now this should look pretty familiar. These Z parameters are based on Thevenin's theorem. So this is what we usually see for Thevenin's theorem on the output of a circuit. When I show how circuits interact with each other, I show the input as simply an impedance, but if I wanted to get down to the nitty gritty and really analyze it, I would put a voltage source there too. But I don't when I'm explaining how circuits go together, but really should be like this. So any circuit can be built up with these type of Z parameters, basically Thevenin's theorem. So we have the collector here, and the emitter here. So the emitter is split up. In reality, they're together, but this shows that they're completely different circuits. What goes on in the collector circuit and what goes on in the base circuit are completely isolated from each other. So what is this voltage and what's that resistance? Well, they're governed by formulas that tell us what this voltage will be based on what's going on in the input. So if I put a voltage source out here, such as a real circuit, how much current am I going to have? Well, that current's going to depend now on what this resistor is and what this voltage is. And they change. And there's formulas that calculate how they change, and they change based on what's going on over here. And I'm not going to go any deeper into that just to say that it does happen. And so as this voltage decreases, this current is going to, of course, increase. And as this voltage increases, that will decrease. And what this voltage is depends on what's going on over here. And there is a formula that calculates that. So those are your Z parameters. Likewise, there are Y parameters or admittance parameters. So Z parameters are our impedance parameters and our Y parameters are our admittance parameters. So Y parameters, we have our base circuit has a resistor in parallel with a current source. Our collector circuit has a resistor in parallel with a current source. Obviously, the Y parameters or the admittance parameters are based on Norton's theorem because we have resistors in parallel with current sources. And the same thing, we have this current is going to be dependent on what goes on in this circuit. So there's our base, there's our collector, and our separate emitters. And this current is going to change based on what goes on over here. There's going to be some formulas that calculate what goes on over here based on what goes on over there. Something I'm not going to go into now because that's deep into engineering, which we don't go into. So there is the Y parameters. Now that leads us to the hybrid parameters. Now that's something you may have heard of already. H parameters or hybrid parameters. In hybrid parameters, we mix and match our Z and Y parameters to suit the moment. And so I would be tempted to continue using both of these circuits for what I'm going to say now, but just to remind us that we're using hybrid parameters, I'm going to change this to the Z parameter model here. But we don't have to, it depends on what we're doing. So there's our battery. Just depends on how we're looking at the circuit. But just to remind us that we're using hybrid parameters, I'm going to use a Z parameter circuit here and a Y parameter circuit here. Now the parameter we're most interested in is how much current do we have into the collector based on the current going into the base. Now the current going into the base is going to depend on what our voltage is out here, whatever circuit is supplying that voltage, and how big this voltage is. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to put a current meter here to remind us that we can measure that current. And now we're interested in how much current we have here based on that current. 
and there's a hybrid parameter called H F E. That stands for hybrid parameter forward current ratio common emitter circuit. So let's go ahead and tie these together to make that a common emitter circuit. So we're interested in how much collector current we have based on how much base current. So there's our collector current I sub C. There's our base current I sub B. And so the HFE is going to equal our collector current divided by our base current. And this is going to be somewhat changeable because as we increase our collector current, this goes up a little bit. So it's going to be specified at different amounts of collector current. Some data sheets will show two different collector currents. Some will show five or six different collector currents and show you the HFEs for those different collector currents. But that is the most important parameter of the transistor. What is our collector current based on our base current? So if we want to know our collector current, I sub C is going to equal our base current, I sub B, times, let's get this out of the way, HFE. Let's move it over here. There we go. So our collector current is going to be our base current times our HFE. That's usually expressed backwards, but you know, multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter, but you usually see it drawn like this. IC is equal to HFE I B. So using that formula, we can determine our collector current based on our base current. Also notice that these are capital letters. So H F E uppercase letters is our DC specification. However, remember that this changes with our collector current. So as our collector current goes up, there's a slight change. So if this is an alternating current, let's say what's going in here is alternating current. So the current's going up and down and up and down. That means our HFE is changing slightly as our current goes up, our collector current goes up, our HFE goes up just a little bit. As our base current goes down, our collector current goes down and our HFE goes down a little bit. So there's a slight difference between our DC parameters and our AC parameters. Not much, but enough that there's a different specification. So if we have H, little f, little e, lowercase letters, that's going to be our AC parameters. These are sometimes called the small signal parameters and those the large signal parameters. So uppercase letters, DC, lowercase letters, AC. This is also known as beta. There's the Greek letter beta. And most people who talk about beta, I usually don't, say it's equal to HFE, capital F, capital E. However, there are other people who say it's not. They say there's differences, and I'm not going to say what those differences are. There's two or three different theories about what beta actually means. Almost always someone says beta, they mean HFE, but they might not. They do not use beta in data sheets. They only use HFE. I don't use beta because some people say it means other things than HFE, slightly different things. So I'm just going to throw that out and say, I just don't ever use beta. I always use HFE. That's what's used in the data sheets. That's industry standard. So let's stick to HFE. That's the most important parameter we want to know. Let's erase all this other stuff and write that up here. What's the most important thing you need to know about a transistor? That's the hybrid parameter, forward current ratio, common emitter circuit, and that's going to be specified. There will be several specified for each transistor because it does change with our collector current, but that's the one we want to know. Now, while I've got this up here, I want to talk about another one because it will come up, and that's this guy right here. That resistor sort of represents a parameter called H O E and notice it's lowercase letters. So it's not really alternating current, but it's a dynamic. It's specified over a certain range of collector currents and it is equal to our output admittance. And of course, admittance is the reciprocal of impedance. 
And so we represent it as a resistor, but in reality, it should be a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor, because in reality, those all exist. We just don't talk about them much because they're pretty small at low frequencies, but admittance is the reciprocal of impedance. And so that resistor is equal to, let's get this out of the way here. That resistor is equal to the reciprocal of H O E. Some places will say that resistor is equal to HOE. That's incorrect. It is actually the reciprocal of HOE, HOE being the output admittance. And later on, we will see the effect of HOE when we look deeper into how this transistor works. So there's our hybrid parameters and what we need to know about them. There's a lot more in there. Each one of these components has a formula that tells you how it reacts to different things. And each one of these tells us how the collector circuit reacts to what the base circuit is doing, but we don't want to go any deeper than we have. So HFE, which is the collector current divided by the base current. So our collector current is going to be some ratio higher than the base current, and that's what we need to know from the hybrid models. Now this brings us to my favorite model. And if you've watched my video on Zener diodes, you might start getting an idea of what that model is, and that is the LGM model, which equals Little Green Man. So the LGM model, our transistor has a base circuit with a current meter in it. In the collector circuit, we're going to have a current meter and a variable resistor. And we'll leave them disconnected now, but for the moment, let's put our little green man in here because he has a very important job. He controls the resistance of this variable resistor, but he has to keep an eye on these two current meters. He's watching that one. He's watching that one. He's got his head on a swivel, keeping constant check. And he has a placard on the wall in his little chamber that says H. F E. And that's going to have a number on it. Let's make it 10 for this particular demonstration. HFE equals 10. It can be anywhere from 5 to 100 or maybe even 300 depending on the transistor and the actual conditions. So we have a variable resistor controlled by a little green man who has instructions to make sure that the collector current I sub C is HFE times the base current, I sub B. So if he sees a base current of one milliamp, what's he going to do? He is going to adjust his resistor until he sees a collector current of 10 milliamps. Does he know what that resistance is? Doesn't need to know. He just turns the knob until he sees that this current meter has 10 times the current of that current meter, assuming that the HFE is 10. And of course, then if we increase this to two milliamps, then he's going to have to decrease his resistance to increase the collector current to make that 20 milliamps. So that's the little green man model, which gives us a more practical view of how a transistor works. I'm going to make this a little more complicated down the road, but basically, that's what we need to know, is that the transistor acts like a variable resistor, and as our base current goes up, that resistance has to go down to increase our collector current, and the intelligence that controls it, the little green man, is going to make sure that the collector current is HFE times the base current.